Hello and welcome again. Welcome to the third video in the financing capital budgeting and investment sequence. And in this one, I will be talking to you about the importance of correlation and the characteristics of a two security portfolio. Now, we talk about a two security portfolio for a simple reason. The formulas are simpler. We can generalize it to three, four, five, six thousand security portfolio. The logic will be exactly the same. The only problem is that, well, my formulas will explode to a point um, that they will not be able to fit on my whiteboard. Now, what is correlation? Correlation is the degree of co-movement of securities. You could have, in principle, two securities with the following characteristic. One moves like this, and another one moves like this. So the black line and the red line move very close together. And then you can have another scenario. You have the black line and you have the blue line. And they move more or less in the opposite directions. Now, if you were to have a choice, what securities, what pair of securities to invest in, well, there isn't much sense in investing in these two because they move pretty pretty closely together. You are not really gaining anything by adding the red line to your black line. In this case, on the other hand, the volatility will be kind of canceled out. Uh, when you have your um, black line going up, returns on this black security are good, returns on the blue security are poor, but when the returns on the black line are poor, returns on the blue line are good. You always want assets in your portfolio that perform good in bad times. It's easy to find assets that perform well in good times and poorly in bad times. You want securities that are negatively correlated. So the coefficient of correlation, which is the Greek letter rho, takes on a range between plus one and minus one. So in case of plus one, we have a perfectly positive correlation. So everything moves perfectly together. In case of minus one, everything moves perfectly in the opposite direction. So what impact will that have on our portfolio diversification? And the point that I will be making over the next uh, couple of minutes is you want to be as close to minus one as you can. It's difficult. It's very difficult to find securities that move what we call counter secretly, move against the market. But they do exist. So. Let's say that I combine two securities in a portfolio and I need to compute these portfolio's characteristics. Characteristics, it's return and it's standard deviation. So what I expect on average and how dispersed I expect my returns to be. So effectively, I am looking for expected return and risk. So first of all, I need to know the weights how much of my money I put in uh, each of the stocks. And let's say that I have my equally weighted portfolio, weight of stocks one and two are 50-50. So I'm splitting my money evenly between the two securities. Then of course, I need to know their expected returns of each individual security. So let's say that expected return on security one is five and expected return on security two is 10. Then of course, I need to know their individual standard deviations, their individual risks, and they are denoted by the letter sigma. So let's say sigma one is eight, sigma two is 12. I'm just making these numbers up, picking some easy numbers. And let's say that my coefficient of correlation between one and two is 0 
It's actually quite common to see coefficients of correlation somewhere in this neighborhood. They are kind of mildly to moderately positive. They wouldn't necessarily be terribly close to plus one, but most of them will be positive. So 0 0.5 is a good starting point. Now, computing expected return is easy. Let me use a blue color here. So expected return on this portfolio. is seven and a half percent. It's simply the weighted average of individual returns. And since it's a 50-50, it actually becomes a simple average. Simple average of five and 10. Now, computing standard deviation involves quite a convoluted formula, which I do not expect you to memorize. Um, we will be doing this in class. We will have a couple of Excel exercises in class to kind of bring this all home, but the formula looks like this. So the standard deviation of the portfolio will be the square root of W1 squared, sigma1 squared plus W2 squared, sigma2 squared plus 2 times correlation W1, W2 times sigma1, sigma2. Okay, um, again, don't really worry too much about the contents of the formula. We will be um, preloading it in Excel and have a go at it. But I have done some computations prior to recording this video. And if my coefficient of correlation is 0 0.5, my standard deviation will be 8.71. You'd expect, since my returns, um, the return on my portfolio is just an average of returns on individual securities, wouldn't you expect the risk of my portfolio simply be the average of risk of the securities, meaning that it would be 10? No. And this is, this is why diversification works. This is why you don't put all your eggs in one basket. This is why you diversify. It, it makes sense intuitively. But it also makes sense mathematically. We have just shown that instead of getting um, standard deviation of 10, and remember, we are all risk averse investors. We do not like risk. For any level of return, we want this number to be as low as possible. So instead of 10, you get a significantly lower number. Why? Because even though your correlation is positive, it's not one, it's not even close to one. So securities do co-move, but they don't co-move perfectly. They do cancel each other's volatility out a little bit. So what happens in the worst case scenario? In the worst case scenario, when my correlation coefficient is plus one, oh, sorry, it's not percent, it's just one, my standard deviation of this portfolio, and you can take my word for it, or you can preload this formula in Excel and um, check it yourselves. Um, trust me on this one. The number will be equal to 10. So, correlation coefficient of plus one is the only scenario in which diversification actually does not work. Why? Because you are putting together two assets that simply move with each other, move perfectly. And putting two instead of one simply makes no sense. What is my best case scenario? My best case scenario is when my correlation coefficient is negative one. That's when they basically move against one another, canceling each other's volatility. And again, take my word for it. You can check it yourself. Two. You see how low my standard deviation is. If I play with these weights, there is a formula when my correlation coefficient is minus one, it's actually possible to get my standard deviation to zero. We are not going to bother with that in this video. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line is correlation coefficient is extremely important. The lower it is, the better off you are from the perspective of portfolio diversification. Thank you very much for listening, and in the next video, I will be talking about um, Efficient Frontier. See you.